I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do no one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind and true. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend as kind as he. No one else could take my sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Every day he comes to me with new assurance More and more I understand his words of love But I'll never know just why he came to save me Till someday I see his blessed face above No one ever cared for me like Jesus There's no other friend so kind as he No one else could take the sin and darkness from me Oh, how much he cares for me. Amen. Amen, Aaron. Appreciate it. Char see Betty Taylor here. Yes, it is good to have Betty. Charles Weigel wrote that song. Yeah. Charles Weigel in uh, Tennessee Temple, they built a uh, big, big building there, a music center, named it the Weigel Music Hall. Anybody ever been on that campus and saw that? You've seen that, haven't you, Miss Burke? Well, I went there, you know, back in uh, 81, 85. And anyway, uh, Jack Kyles was preaching one day up there at the, at the chapel. And he said he, wa he, he always, everybody loved Brother Weigel. Brother Weigel's wife left him. Um, he remained in ministry. He said, if you don't, she said, if you don't get out of ministry, I'm going to leave you. He said, honey, as much as I love you, I can't. I can't, I can't leave ministry. I have to serve my Lord. Anyway, it broke his heart. Never did marry again. Dr. Robertson uh, loved Brother Weigel, and he built that music center. Named, they named that music center after him. Dr. Jack Howells was preaching one day, and he went up to see Brother Weigel. At the, uh, he had an apartment there on the top floor of the music hall. And he went in and he, he went up to the door. He was going to the door and he heard an awfulest racket you could ever hear. He's just, just the, jumping up and down, having a, having a grand old time. And uh, Dr. Dr. Weigel was a, a little man. Little man, gray-headed, kind of stupid shoulder. And uh, Jack Kyles went over there and looked in the door. And he was jumping up and down on the bed, just saying, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. <laughs> Amen. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. And uh, he meant those words. So it's, it's, it's good to know why you write some words sometime, isn't it? 
And uh, that, that was it. No one ever cared. Even though when his love forsook him, the Lord Jesus Christ never forsook him. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter number 8. Freedom and liberty. We're going to continue with that thought and the claims of Christ. The claims of Christ in John chapter 8. I don't know how far we'll get in it, but uh, we'll go far enough to help you tonight anyway in John chapter number 8. You remember the story there in John chapter number 8 about the woman taken in adultery. And then the Lord Jesus, after everybody's accusation, they said, Stoner, you know what the law says? What do you say, Master? What do you say, Jesus? And uh, Jesus said in verse number 7, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. First a st cast, let him first cast a stone at her. And he stooped down, he wrote on the ground. And then and everybody left. And in verse number 10, he said, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said in verse 11, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. For Jesus to make a statement like that, he knew that one day he would pay for her sin. He would pay for her sin because the law, there was no sacrifice for her sin. The law said stone her. There was no law for David's sin as far as offering a sacrifice. Lord, if that's what you wanted, I would have offered the sacrifice. Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldst not, is what he said in Psalm 51. So he asked God for mercy. And what we see right here is God in the flesh having complete mercy on a woman taken in adultery, which the penalty was death. All right, we get on to verse number 12. And we find out that Jesus started making some claims to support his authority for, to forgive sins. First of all, he said here in verse number 12, all the way through verse number 20, I don't know if I'll read it all, but he said, he claimed to be the light of the world. He claimed to be the light of the world. If you'll notice in John chapter number 8 and verse number 12, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come, and whither I go. You see, the objection from the Pharisees what was that his self-testimony of himself is inadmissible. And then in verse number 14 through 18, Jesus made that reply that his father endorsed him. He claimed to be the light of the world. Hold your place there. Turn back to John chapter number one. We've already read this in John. If you've read the book of John, which is one of the richest books, and the Bible says uh, you ought to read this book because it's written specifically in John chapter 21 that you might believe and that believing you could have life through his name. So if you're hey, struggling with this matter of believing Christ, that's all the Bible is great and wonderful. But especially get down to the nitty gritty, read the first 11 chapters of Genesis, find out where the pivot is, how everything was good, and then sin came in the world, and then read the book of John. And it shows you who Christ is. He's God in the flesh. And what he has done is sufficient to get you to heaven. Amen, if you'll believe it. All right, back in John chapter 1. Now, this claim has already been made by the... Uh, 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 John, uh, not, uh, not John the Revelator, but John the Baptist. Uh, and as John the Revelator writes it, the Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Isn't that wonderful? It, it, not anything that was made is, was made without Him. He is a, he's a creator. So, you know, this evolution theory is a bunch of junk because there had to be something out there to make something. Well, Jesus made that something. Except you and I understand that he created it just like it is. All right, and then the Bible said in verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And light, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist, the same that came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. John the Baptist, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. 
That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. If you don't get anything tonight, get that. Get that. That really puts a damper on Calvinistic theology, doesn't it? God said he has lighted every man that comes into the world. Every man, every man, that which may be known of God, the Bible says in Romans 1, is manifest in him. God has lighted every man that comes into the world. Now you act upon that light. And that's why we get on, and we're not preaching on that tonight, but that's why Luke and Matthew both says, be careful, the light, is in, the light that's in you is not darkness. You see that light that's in you, be careful, it's not darkness. You say, that's a strange saying. Well, people use that light within them knowing they need a, a, a Savior, but then they start trying to work their way into heaven. And what happens to that light? That light becomes darkness because that, what they're relying on to get them to heaven is their own good works rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to respond to the truth. Respond to the truth. Every time you hear truth, respond to the truth. Respond to it. God gives you truth, respond. If he's given you some truth tonight, respond to it. Adopt it. Incorporate it. Believe it. Jesus lights every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, the Bible said, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Receiving and believing in this verse are synonymous. We don't go through steps. Well, first of all, you've got to believe him, and then you've got to do this, then you've got to do that, and finally you've got to receive him. Believing and receiving, can you see that in verse 12? That's synonymous. When you receive Christ, you believed him. Amen? So don't be confused with wording. You receive him, you believed him. You rest in him, you've believed him. You have faith in him, you've believed him. Amen? Now, <clears throat> the Bible goes on to say, uh, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but God. So man wasn't born, uh, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, uh, born into the family, like John chapter 8 we're going to look at, like some people, Pharisees said, they, Father, Abraham's our father, we be not uh, uh, servants because Abraham's our father. Well, they thought they was born into the family just because they were Jewish. And then the Bible said that's not true there in verse number 13, nor of the will of man. So you didn't get there of your own works, but the Bible said the only way you're born again is of God, is of God. You're born of God and you're in the family. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. So God became flesh, went to Calvary, paid your sin debt. He has lighted every man. You respond to that truth. You respond to that truth. Maybe there's a question mark about that truth. Get in the Word of God. <clears throat> the Bible is your authority. I promise you it's an authority. If, you want, if you're having a, a, a difficult time with the authority of the Word of God, let me challenge you to try to find some discrepancies in it. Find, and if you think you can, come to me and let's underline them and let's go through them. The Bible never contradicts itself, written over a period of 15 years by 40 some authors, and not one contradiction. It had to be one directing mind. One directing mind. So God wrote it all down. He's the light of the world. And then, not only did he claim to be the light of the world uh, in 12 through 20, but number two, he claimed to have a heavenly origin. Look at verse 21. Now, we could read all of it, but look at verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and you shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whether I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. He claimed to have a heavenly origin there in, the, in 21, 22, and 23. In verse number 20, verse number 20, the arrival of his hour, the Bible says, his hour has not yet come, the arrival of his hour, and what hour was that? Now on the cross, his hour had not yet come to die for the sins of the world, but when it came, my dear friend, it would accomplish the purpose of his coming according to verse number 21 and 22. Sins would be forgiven. Uh, verse 22, carnal minds without understanding. Verse number 22 said, will he kill himself? That's a carnal mind. 
That's a carnal mind. You're not listening. I'm trying to speak to you, Jesus said, but you're not listening. The Bible said in verse 47, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Amen. Now, if you'll notice over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, first hold your place in John chapter 8, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're talking about the carnal mind. Now, it's not that the carnal mind cannot understand. It's because people are so accustomed to the carnal mind and they go with the flow of the majority that they'll just write you are. And what I'm preaching tonight, probably some of you just letting it go over here looking at your clock. I hope you're not. Because this, Jesus said, these are the words of him. And, and you need to believe these words. Well, the Bible said over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, looking at the carnal mind, it said, But the natural man, verse 14, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If you'll back up in verse 10, 11, 12, and 13, he said, Because I'm a man, and I'm paraphrasing, I know what a man thinks. Because I'm a man, I know what a man thinks. Now, I know the Bible tells us husbands to try to read our wives' minds. That's near an impossibility. But the Bible tells us in Peter to know our wives and, 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 and find out what makes them tick. And so we're, it's our responsibility, fellas, to do that. But because I'm a man, I know what a man thinks. And because you're a lady, you know what a lady thinks. And that's what basically they're saying right here. But if you'll notice in chapter, in chapter number 2, um, uh, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. I can know what a man thinks, because I am a man. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Isn't that something, you that are saved? Now, God enlightened you and gave you enough truth that you trusted him. But when he came in you and sealed you to the day of redemption... Aren't you amazed as you read the Word of God how God begins to enlighten you and, and illuminate you with truth? It's, it's not because I'm a special person and not because you're a special person, but God in you is special. God in you is special and He gives you that understanding. And so we can, the Bible said in verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal man can't understand that. A carnal mind can't understand it. Get it back down to the nitty gritty. If you're a sinner, you need a savior. Just, just start there. Don't even try to go. Uh, you know, a lot of people are intrigued by prophecy. They're intrigued. I'm, I'm like Brother uh, Archer. That was one of the things that did intrigue me. But I realized that I had such a hard time understanding all of that. It was a bunch of gibberish to me, but when I come to know the Lord, it just seems like it unfolded. It just seemed like it unfolded. And that's why we preach what we preach on a pre-tribulational rapture and a pre-millennial coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, ruling and reigning for a thousand years, a new heaven and a new earth after he burns it all up, after the great white throne. That's why we do that because it's in the Bible. It's clear as a nose on your face if you'll study it. All right, but um, that's just another, I don't know why I even brought that out, but it's, we can understand things. If you'll notice in verse 15 of chapter 2, but he that is spiritual does what? Judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? What does it say there? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Since we have the mind of Christ, we can understand. We can make judgment. I was told just the other day, uh, I don't want the church judging me. I said, well, don't act a fool. And we won't judge you. We won't call you a fool. We don't call you a fool. If a man comes up, I tell our fellas in the morning Bible study, if a fella comes up uh, uh, in, in Bible study or in church and he's got a painter's hat on, he's wearing glasses with splatters of paint all over him, he's got overalls on with a paintbrush hanging out his pocket, and I look out there and he's got a paint ladder and his paint truck, his truck's all splattered with paint, I'm going to make a judgment that that man's a painter. I'm going to make a judgment. All right, now if you say you love God, if you say you love God, what, what I can't see on the inside don't mean a hill of beans. Don't mean a hill of beans. Uh, I can never pronounce somebody saved or unsaved. I can't do that. You don't have the right and I don't have the right. Nor any priest has the right to do that. No one has the right. Only Jesus can let you know if you're saved. I don't know if you're saved, but you do. 
You know. You don't know if I'm saved, but I do. I do. Now, I can assume by looking out over the congregation that there's people here that's trusted Christ and they act like it. That's the only evidence I have. You don't have any other evidence. It's what comes out of their mouth and how they conduct their lives. And that's why the Bible said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works in heaven and glor uh, see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I can't see. It was Brother Donnell's daughter that was in Bible study one time. And she said, I finally see that. I finally see that. We, the, the life we now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And my life should be such an example that people would want to trust the same Lord I trust. It, that's, what, that's what good works are for. All right, you got the spiritual mind, you know that. If you got a carnal mind, don't try to read anything else into it. You got a carnal mind, you need to be saved. You need your mind enlightened. You need to hear what's going on. You need to listen to the Word of God. You need to trust Christ as your personal Savior. All right, now back in John chapter number 8, Jesus uh, claimed a heavenly origin. Now, their carnal minds were without understanding in verse 22, verse 23 of John chapter number 8. Their thinking problem was the difference of Jesus' origin and their origin. Their thinking problem. Jesus didn't have a problem about thinking correctly. Jesus is God. He is wisdom. He's everything good, holy, and righteous. It's you and I have a problem with our thinking. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So we got a problem with our thinking, Cap. We need to, we need to listen. We need, all right, dear God, I've got a problem. Now I understand I've got a problem. I really got a problem. I came to that understanding and I come to the conclusion on my religious training, if I thought it was right, it was probably wrong. I really came to that conclusion. I said, all right, let's watch it all up, get it all away, push it all aside, tear down, root out, so you can do what? So you can build up. Give me, give me what I need to know. And as we begin to study the Word of God, God began to show me what I needed to know. I trusted Him as my Savior and the Lord allowed me to be in a position where I can tell you about Him. With, 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 Look at the Word of God. And the only authority that I have in telling you this is what's in front of me. This is the authority. I'm not the, you're not the authority. I'm not the authority. It's the Word of God that's the authority. So the only problem between the Pharisees thinking and Jesus thinking was the difference of their origin. Theirs were spiritually dead and their thinking was limited to this world. Amen. Now, number three, Jesus claimed to be the I am of his people. He claimed to be the light of the world. He claimed a heavenly origin. He told that woman uh, 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 taken in adultery, uh, uh, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. He forgave her of her sins right there, right on the spot and forgave her of her sins, they begin to argue about situations. Jesus started making his claims. I'm the light of the world. I'm a, I have a heavenly origin. Uh, I claim, and he claimed to be the I am of his people in verse 24, 25, 26, all the way through 29. Let me read 24 again. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Jesus never hid his identity. Jesus always claimed deity. Let's go on and read it. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of their father. I'll tell you why they didn't understand. Because they didn't want to understand. They did not want to understand. Verse 47 again. He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye there, ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. You don't want to hear them. If you want to hear them, God's going to enlighten you and give you more. If you don't want them, God's not going to do it. He's going to let you have your own way and go as far as you want to down the wrong trail if that's where you want to go. But the whole time he's going to be putting up some lights and some impasses trying to get you turned back around. But he's going to let you go. He's not just going to stop you dead in your tracks. He'll let you go that way. And so that's why we need to make a decision for him. Amen. While we can. All right. Now, um, and it goes on to say, uh, 
Verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. If Jesus Christ was not God in the flesh, that, that right there would have been blasphemy. I always do the things that please him. Is there a one of you that can stand up and say, I've always done the things that please him? You can't. You know you can't. And I know you can't. And I can't either. And as he spake these words, many believed on it. Well, <clears throat> Uh, verse 24 is a difficult verse. I've had more people come to me about verse 24. And because we tell people, we use the scripture, and we use verses like 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, and we use um, um, Hebrews chapter 9, we use Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, talking about, and, and these are verses that uh, when he by himself had... Uh, had purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So our sins had been purged. Uh, he, he is, he's a sacrifice for sin, one time for sins, for all. Is, we know that. First John chapter 2, he's a propitiation, verse 2, for our sin and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that. So I'm telling the world your sins, the penalty of your sin has been taken care of. And you're not going to hell because of your sins. Is that a true statement? How do I know it's a true statement? Because God said so, and one little verse in the scripture proves what I say is true. And it, and it supports the rest of these verses I gave you, and that's John 3, 18. He that believeth on the Son is not condemned, but he that believeth not is what? He's condemned already. I didn't have to sin to be condemned. I was born in it. Because I am a sinner, I chose to sin. So I acknowledge that as well. And now since I acknowledge that and acknowledge the guilt and acknowledge the condemnation and acknowledge the penalty, the wages of sin is death, God said, I can fix that if you'll let me. I'll fix that. I became a man and went to Calvary. And I took care of it and I rose again to prove it was all true. And our message today is to tell you it's all fixed. Now, but still people use that verse 24. And they'll say, well, what does the Bible mean when it said, I say, therefore unto you, you shall die in your sins if you believe not, if you do what? Believe not that I am he. Now, John 3, 18 said what? If you believe in Christ, you're not condemned. If you don't believe what? All right, so you know what John 24 is simply stating? John 8, 24 is simply stating, if you die in the state of unbelief, if you die in the state you were born in, that there's no hope for you. That's what he's saying. Ain't that simple? But I don't know how many theologians try to take that one verse and try to explain it away. But it just harmonizes with the rest of it. If you look at it, it says that ye, you shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that I am he. But if you will believe that I am he, you won't die in your sins. Amen? You won't. If you believe that who I am, <clears throat> I've had people even take me to task on believing the deity of Christ before you get saved. I don't see how a man can get saved without believing the deity of Christ. There's no way, shape, form, or fashion that a man can come. He can't. He can't come. He can't. How are you going to, try, how, how are you going to believe that, that Jesus forgives sins and only God can forgive sins if he's not God? Pretty simple, isn't it? So Jesus is deity. God became a man. A virgin's womb. He took upon him human flesh. Hebrews chapter 2. And uh, Philippians said he was uh, uh, fashioned as a man, and as a man he humbled himself, became obedient unto death. All right, so <clears throat> he's God. Now, the, th the third claim, and it's time to go, he claimed to be the I am of his people. He claimed to be the I am of his people. Not only verse 24 20, uh, to 29 that we read, but look also at verse 58. Now we got 24, we have verse 28, I am he, verse 24, I am he, and then look at verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was what? I am. That article, he, was put in there by the translators, and it's for our benefit. It's the King James Bible, it's, and it, it puts light. It's not that they added to the Word of God. Don't believe that at all. 
anybody tells you that they're liars they, it, it's uh, exactly like it was written from the, from the Textus Receptus. It's the Word of God. I don't have to question it. You don't have to question it. We can believe it. But you see that I am is the emphasis in verse 24 and verse 28. I am. I am. I am. Do y'all remember Moses at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3? Moses. I love Charlton Heston. Moses. Moses. You know, if you ever watched that movie, I told you what I did, visitors. I, I told my church members what I did. I was preaching on Moses. I mean, really getting down with preaching on Exodus chapter 3. And I said, hold on a minute. I said, that's not in the Bible. That was in Charlton Heston's movie. Yeah, and I quoted something on the burning bush there. But we do know this for sure. In Exodus chapter 3, I'm not eloquent, Moses said. Who, who am I going to even tell him that sent me? And what did God tell him? Tell him I am sent thee. And I am is mentioned there in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. Isaiah 43, verse 10. These Pharisees knew good and well exactly what Jesus was saying. How do I know that? Because after he said what he did in verse 59, what did they do? They tried to kill him. They knew he was claiming deity. And I've had people, I've had a Jehovah Witness throw me a Bible and say, nowhere in this Bible, you know they'll bring the King James and they bring that silly thing they carry around. Yeah, silly thing, bad news for heathens or something, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, and, and, and nowhere in this Bible does it say Jesus died. Jesus claimed deity. I said, man, alive fellas, how much time do you have? How much time? And I was serious. I said, how much time do you have? Let's sit down. And you know what their answer was? Well, you're the only Baptist so far that's had enough sense to even want to rebuke us. That's what they said. Basically, that's what they said. You know what that tells me? That tells me there's a lot of ignorance in Baptist churches. Especially up in that area. Yeah. They preach a holler and spitting sermon tell you to come and do something. And you go on, you go to the altar on a feel-good emotion. You go on the altar and I've had, up there in the camp meetings in the mountains, I've had preachers, Baptist preachers, get up and say, uh, you go down there to pray with somebody, leave him alone, son, let him pray through. I, I was there when it happened. Pray through to what? If I, I know what it is, if I pray hard enough and long enough, I'll get in. You're not going to get in other than believe on what Christ did for you to get in. And there is so many beliefs, and I know I'm on YouTube, and I know I'm going to hurt some people's feelings up there, but, but, but it's full of them, North Georgia and North Carolina and Tennessee. I'd say probably down here too. I'd probably say down here too. It's, it's, it's full of uh, emotionalism, and, but right here in John chapter number 8, and I'm going to finish this message next Sunday because I really want to get in to what kind of belief that these Pharisees have in verse 30. I really want to get into that. Some people take it that uh, the Lord's talking about going on as a child of God to perfection. I'm here to tell you that's not what it means. So you read it yourself. You read it, I'm going to give you a little hint and I'm going to preach on it. But if you'll notice, it said to those Jews which believed on him, if ye, ye, there is no reason no reason whatsoever to think that Jesus is changing. There's no transition in changing to the Jews he was speaking to. He said to those Jews which believed. And from that point on, it's consistent. The writing is consistent with he's talking to those people that said they believed. And if you'll notice that, it says... Uh, Ye shall know the truth, if you'll stay in my word. And then verse 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. You know, they're, they're arguing with Christ. They think they can get born into the family by physical birth. And then uh, uh, verse 37, Jesus said, I know who you are. I know ye, but ye seek to kill me. Uh, look at verse 38, ye, your father. Uh, verse uh, 39, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Still talking to that same crowd. Still talking to that same crowd. And if you go on down here in verse 43, why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word? 
ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, uh, that's just a little preview. I'm closing. That's a, that's a little preview of what I'm going to be preaching uh, next, Lord willing, next Sunday night in John chapter number 8. But that's something for you to study. When people believe in Jesus, it's going to be believing in the very person and work of Jesus. It's not going to be believing in how many people he can feed with some loaves and fishes. It's not going to be believing how, uh, 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 his miracles or him walking on water. His, you believe in Christ is going to believe who he is. He's God in the flesh and what he did on Calvary is sufficient in his shed blood and his resurrection. That's what's going to get you to heaven is him. Is him. And so don't add to what he's done. If you do, it's called a superficial belief. John 2 said it's a vain belief. They believed in Jesus, but Jesus didn't believe in them. All right, let's stand to our feet.